This training snippet, sponsored by the U.S. Department of Energy's Office of Project Management, provides an overview of the schedule risk assessment process and how the results assist in project management. The purpose is to provide a common understanding with DOE and among DOE contractors and to provide consistency. A Schedule Risk Assessment, or SRA, is an analysis tool which uses the integrated master schedule to identify the high-risk areas of the project, determine the likelihood of risks materializing, and then assessing the impact of each possible risk. While an SRA is an industry best practice, it is also a requirement of the Integrated Project Management Report, or IPMR, which is cited in DOE Order 413.3b and in the Corporate Clause DOE-H-2024 when EVMS is required. The initial SRA should begin as soon as the project baseline is implemented. In general, the SRA uses statistical techniques in the form of Monte Carlo simulations to quantify the impact of uncertainties in duration estimates along with technical, programmatic, and schedule risks on the project schedule, and the probability of meeting the schedule objectives. Transitional scheduling, which results in the integrated master schedule, for most projects, uses a standard critical path methodology, or CPM. In the process of determining the start and finish dates for each activity in the schedule, a single duration is determined. This is called the deterministic approach. While these durations are based on estimates and may themselves be optimistic or pessimistic, the input into the scheduling tool is a single set of dates for each finish and start, rather than a range. In the case shown, this activity is planned to start on May 1st and finish on May 15th, resulting in a 15-day duration activity. This is rather specific information being used for the scheduling process. However, in reality, project duration has a degree of uncertainty. Probabilistic scheduling introduces the application of a date range. This process approaches duration estimates with a degree of uncertainty and forms a distribution curve for each activity based on the evaluated best, worst, and most likely duration estimates. Think about your drive into work each morning. If you had to pick a single duration, you might say 35 minutes. Now, if you think about the absolute fastest it's taken you to make that commute, the best case, you might say 25 minutes. Finally, think back to your worst day of commuting, the snowstorm last year, and you remember a 90-minute drive. These three values would form your most likely, best, and worst cases respectively. You'll also notice that there is a greater area of this curve to the right, or worst case side, of the curve as compared to the left, or best case side. This indicates that for this activity, the duration curve assessment resulted in a higher likelihood for a late finish than an early finish. In other words, given your own assessment, there's a greater chance that your commute will take more than 35 minutes as compared to less than 35 minutes, even though the most common duration is still 35 minutes. The critical, near-critical, and high-risk activities in the schedule are assigned a duration uncertainty range with a three-point estimated duration. In a project using earned value management, this estimating is generally performed by the Control Account Manager, or CAM. The remainder of the activities can be assigned a duration range using a banding approach, meaning a group of activities are given the same probability distribution without individual assessment. The basic process for conducting an SRA is to first have a healthy integrated master schedule with a meaningful critical path. The SRA process uses the same logic network for its calculations, except instead of calculating a project duration based on a single set of dates, it repeats the forward and backward calculations hundreds or thousands of times. For each of these iterations, the software randomly assigns different activity durations between the best and worst cases based on the associated distribution curve. As a result, a completion date associated with each iteration is logged, and a summation of these results reports on the probability of achieving each date within the range of the total outcomes. The results of the SRA are often depicted using graphics generated by the SRA software. This is a sample histogram, which plots the number of predicted completion forecasts hitting each given date in the date range. In the output shown here, for example, 
The SRA results report the project is predicted to finish anywhere between March 1st and the week of April 22nd. On the top right, the modeling reached 100% on April 22nd, which means that, given the range inputs for each activity in the network schedule, there is a 100% chance for the project to be finished by that date. We can compare this to the project finish date currently calculated by the Deterministic Critical Path Method Schedule, which is March 18th. According to the output of the modeling, there is a 17% chance of the project being finished on or before that date. Statistically, the project doesn't even reach a 50% probability of completion until March 23rd, which is a full week past the current finish date. It's a common observation that the dates forecasted by the deterministic schedule often are below the 50% probability of success in the SRA modeling. To understand this, think back to our example of your commute to work. The most likely case was 35 minutes, while on a good day, you might be 10 minutes early. However, on a bad day, 55 minutes late. In other words, the distribution curve for this activity skews to the late side of the most likely case. This is not uncommon in an SRA distribution analysis. If the most likely case was used as the deterministic duration for each activity in the integrated master schedule, most activities have more days between the most likely and worst case than between the most likely and best case. The overall results, therefore, will often report a less than 50% probability for the deterministic outcome, as in the case shown in this histogram. This graphic on the left is a tornado chart, and it lists the tasks whose duration estimates and logic are most likely to impact the project's end dates. In this case, task A1520 resulted in a delay to the project's finish date in 56% of the iterations. These results allow the project team to take action on the specific tasks, which are most responsible for the results of the SRA. The statistically-based SRA focuses on duration uncertainty in the schedule. Another source of schedule risk is unplanned project events. There are an endless set of examples for unplanned risks, such as material shortages, weather delays, and subcontracting, to name a few. Risk events are typically quantified in two dimensions, likelihood and consequence. Risk events have a less than 100% likelihood of occurring, or else they would have been planned in the baseline schedule. But if they do occur, there will be a consequence to downstream tasks, an increased cost or a change to the technical expectations of the project. The goal of considering risk events in scheduling is to have plans in place which reduce the likelihood or impact of the event, or both. Overall, one of the primary goals of a disciplined risk management process is to identify these risk events and develop mitigation plans to deal with them. However, not all risk events are mitigated to zero likelihood. For those that are not, and for which a time impact to downstream activities is possible, they need to be factored into the Monte Carlo analysis in a similar manner for uncertainty as how accounted for in determining cost contingency and confidence. To summarize the SRA process, the project team takes the remaining task in the integrated master schedule and assigns a three-point estimate distribution to each. They do this by evaluation from subject matter experts for the critical, non-critical, and high-risk tasks but may allow the software to use a probability distribution band for the remaining to establish each activity's range of values. Also include any remaining risk events that were mitigated in the past. These values are fed into the SRA software, which, using a Monte Carlo statistical analysis, calculates the results over and over, each time using a different set of random values from a probability range of each activity. The modeling simulation produces a distribution of the possible outcome values and reports the probability of any given date being successful. Plus, it reports a prioritized listing of the activities in the schedule, which have the greatest impact to the project's outcome. It is important that the project team use the results of the SRA and the analysis should invoke action to mitigate risks and improve project success probabilities. Potential responses to the SRA results are reviewing logic and durations, revising plans, building workaround or mitigation plans, 
revising approaches to completing the work scope, evaluating the use of schedule margin in the IMS, technical scope changes that would allow for less risky project execution, and potentially changes to the budget or the forecast of costs associated with the project. Finally, the results of all SRAs are to be reported in the Contractor's Integrated Program Management Report, or IPMR. This reporting includes not only the results of the analysis, but the actions taken based on those results. The SRA process is a valuable management tool, which greatly increases the usefulness of the project schedule. They should be performed on all initial baselines and after any significant change to the baseline. In addition, regardless of baseline changes, it is a best practice to periodically perform the analysis as the schedule is updated with performance. The SRA is often used as a probability test of the critical path schedule's forecasted finish date, plus finish dates of critical iterim milestones, and these date forecasts and the nature of the critical path often change during the course of a project schedule. Periodically running an SRA analysis can keep the project team continually aware of the shifting risks to schedule during the life of the project. Schedule risk assessments, or SRAs, are analysis tools used to identify and manage the high-risk areas of the project in the integrated master schedule and the likelihood of these risks materializing. The SRA process assumes a duration uncertainty for each activity in the IMS by estimating the most likely, best, and worst-case durations, and runs a probabilistic analysis of the likelihood of project and critical milestone completions. The SRA reporting also identifies the highest risk activities. These are activities whose duration estimates and logic are most likely to impact planned completion dates. With this information, the project can develop mitigation plans. SRAs should always be performed on newly planned baselines, but also at frequent intervals during a project so that risks are continually understood. These intervals can be driven by significant contract changes, but also periodically as the schedule is statused. In addition to statistical-based SRAs, the project's risk management program identifies potential risk events and develops risk mitigation strategies to reduce their likelihood and impact. For additional information relative to project controls procedures, templates, helpful references, more snippets, and training materials, please refer to DOE PM's external EVM homepage or the internal max.gov PM library. Check back periodically for updated or new information. Thank you for using the Snippet Library.